In error modeling, there are plenty of competition categories, but this one is just mind-blowing. No high speeds, no aggressive maneuvers, but the beauty of the lightest flyable structures on Earth. This is the Joshua Finn biplane during the last US indoor championships with its world record flight. This glider is made from thin balsa wood and 0.5 micron thick OS film. Flying weight was about 500 milligrams. It was built for rubber power and achieved several flights over 50 minutes with the propeller. But even without it, it wouldn't land. This structure cannot fly outdoors because it's too fragile, so it is based on delicate indoor air movement. This flight was almost five minutes long and now it waits for the FEI ratification. It looks just so unreal. It's really cool how technologies and inventions of aviation fans is developing air sports so much that we can show you such amazing content every week. My name's Regan Tetlow and this is our weekly 15 minute show with only the best aviation content worldwide. Please support our mission by clicking like, share and subscribe but also via Patreon where you can donate to this project very easily. Alright, let's jump into the show. The South African National Championship ended last week in Wings Park and for the beginning of the show we have some fresh results from the event. Patrick Davison was unopposed in the unlimited field but he put up impressive numbers with a overall 82.5% flying a GB1 aircraft. The GB1 has yet to make an appearance at any World Unlimited Aerobatic Championship event but Davison's recent performance proves that in the right hands the machine can deliver. Davison will be the only pilot representing South Africa if he can make it to the upcoming World Championships in Lesno, Poland in August. His last World Championship appearance was in 2017 at the Malayne South Africa event where he flew a Sukhoi 31 and finished 13th overall amongst a very tight group of pilots all within close contention for podium spots. Kyle Wall captured his first South African advanced title flying an extra 330LX in a field of four pilots. Congratulations guys! <sighs> Red Bull has announced the latest schedule calendar for the upcoming Red Bull x Outs competition, the most challenging hike and fly race ever created on earth. Let's take a closer look at the details. Red Bull X Alps is the competition where paragliding pilots need to fly, run or walk literally across the Alps, choosing the best options to cross the highest mountains in Europe within just a few days. It will be 20 years since the first Red Bull X Alps was launched from Austria's Deichten mountain, kickstarting the hike and fly race phenomenon. The application phase begins on the 1st of July this year. The selection will start on the 1st of September and the official starting list will be announced on the 10th of October. The brand new route across the Alps will be released on the 15th of March 2023 and the race is planned to be on the 18th of June 23. We can't wait. In last week's show, we promised to deliver you the latest results from the Ozone Chill and Open competition, the biggest paragliding event in the USA this year, with almost 130 pilots on the grid. So let's check them out. After five tasks with the longest one longer than 105 kilometers, pilots ended competition in the 53 kilometer long race to goal task between Chelan Falls and Mason City with two checkpoints on the run. All categories were able to fly all tasks, including rookie female and rookie men. The Chelan Open is based on the ideology where well experienced paragliders and masterclass pilots can be giving their advice and a chance to see how they fly clever and fast to the youngsters and newbies. In the toughest ANC Open class, third place goes to Christopher Holub, second to Owen Schumacher and first to Gallon Kirkpatrick, all pilots from the USA. In the female class, Annika Hurden took bronze, Alexia Fisher silver and Gallon Kirkpatrick gold. The best rookie pilot was Matthew Hoffman before Steve Nichols and Andrew Byron and the best rookie female was Dakota Wright. 
We are only a week before the long-awaited 2022 World Games in Birmingham, Alabama, where drone racers and canopy pilots will represent airsports. For the past few weeks, I've been catching up with the world's top swoopers who will participate in these games. This time, I spoke with five times canopy pilot world champion Kurt Bartholomew about the preparations for the games and also his new projects. Take a look. I'm looking forward to seeing you in a few days down in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, me too. It's going to be super exciting. Have you have you been to the location, Kurt? Did you visit? Yeah, yeah. I went. I went last year. Um, I helped helped them uh, check out check it out, make sure you know it was the size of what worked, and um, checked on the trees because there's a bunch of trees around, and helped them you know gave them some advice on on where to locate the pond to make the you know just use the space in the optimal way. So yeah. And what do you think? How's it going to be? I know some pilots have got reservations about it. Oh no, I can't wait! Oh my god, it's right. going to be so awesome. So yeah, so it's on a it's on a, the Barber Motorsports Park, which is a racetrack. And um, I'm I'm a huge nerd when it comes to racing. I love watching racing, so I yeah. I couldn't be more pumped to go compete uh, at, at at this venue. Um, I, I love not landing on drop zones as it is, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't mind, you know, swooping by trees and, and things like that. And the weather should be really nice. And, um, I can't wait. The, the, the racetrack itself is so, it's such a beautiful place. Like the landscaping they do around it and the way they maintain it. Um, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing venue for sure. All right. And with the new distance rules i know there's lots of different calculations and formulas and ideas of what people want to do which water gates they want and then with the distance as well what are you thinking kurt what, what's the strategy so well they, they actually made some adjustments to the rules since uh dubai since we tested yeah. it um so i don't think we're going to really see much of that anymore um but we're just going to see everybody dragging uh every zone you know um, right it, it's uh, if you miss a zone, I think it's just going to take too many points away now. So there's going to be a little right. bit less strategy and, and more, um, you know, just trying to be tight on that, you know, right just before the edge of the second zone and just trying to drag it on and go for it. So many more interesting stories and comments from Kurt can be found in the Air Sports Promotion YouTube channel. Clicking like, share and the notification bell will always let you know of our upcoming content. And also don't forget about the patron link as well in the description where you can easily support our mission to constantly promote air sports and aviation thank you so much over the last few weeks we've already showed you massive amounts of content related to the new blockbuster top gun maverick movie the film already has earned almost 900 million dollars from ticket sales worldwide and the number it just keeps on climbing but on the social media, people are still bringing new ideas. So after the Lego trailer we showed you a few weeks ago, today we have an idea to recreate the movie trailer with only a 20 bucks budget and a few jokes included. The results made by the cracked team is, well, just judge it for yourself. His exploits are legendary. Big scale aero modeling is always really interesting, almost for everyone. And this time, flight test team have released a video with huge preparations for their maiden flight of their 20 foot B-17 four engine bomber radio controlled model. The question is, will it fly? And this is the answer. After six months of cutting, sanding, fiberglassing and dreaming, the team was finally ready for the first flight of the heavy bomber. Before they did the final paint, laser tag and of course pyrotechnics, they need to answer the one crucial question, will and how will it fly? 18 weeks of working 
has given them this result. This huge model was able to fly using only electric power and was shot in the air using two FPV drones. Now it's time for painting and to put the pyros on the model, so we can't wait for the definitive look at this aircraft. Beta Technologies has conducted its first flight test of a electric aircraft at facilities at online retail giant Amazon. Beta's Alia electric prototype demonstrator departed from Amazon's Air Superhub at Northern Kentucky International Airport last Thursday and flew approximately 60 nautical miles to the company's sorting hub at Wellington Air Park outside Dayton, Ohio. Alia's unique design includes an arched 50-foot wing mounted high on a carbon fibre fuselage and battery-powered motors, driving a single push propeller. Beta says it's on track to receive FAI-type certification by 2024. My second special guest this week is a masterclass professional skydiver from Melbourne, Australia. At the age of 34, he's mainly focusing on the competition. Right now, he's in full preparations for the World Games in the USA. So let's catch up with Lee McCormack. Massive congratulations being invited onto the team for the World yeah, Games. It yeah, it's super uh, exciting. I um, I can't wait. It's like the, the first skydiving uh, competition that I've been to that's part of something a bit larger with different sports so yeah it's gonna be really exciting yeah the more i read about it and the ones i've done before previously uh 2017 in poland and then four years before that in uh, colombia but now the americans have got hold of it and they're really they're really pushing out all the stops yeah yeah it looks it's really impressive like all the stuff that i've been seeing online and uh the social media presence they have um yeah, it's um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't. I, I'm actually really excited to check out some of the other sports as well. Um, yeah. And just because yeah, there's some um, yeah, some really sort of interesting sports that you wouldn't um, sort of normally think of. And yeah, um, yeah it'll be really really interesting to go and see those. Well, actually, my last international comp was um, South Africa in 2019, and then COVID right. hit. So yeah, um, yeah this uh, the World Games in a couple of weeks. This is going to be my first international comp in nearly three years. So it's um, yeah, it's nice to be like dusting the rig off and getting back over the water yeah what um some of the other canopy pilots i've been speaking to they reminded me that not only are you there competing as canopy piloting but you get to mix with all the other athletes from your country that, that's quite yeah. special isn't it yeah it is um i mean you know like skydiving is such a, a fringe sport and it's um yeah. it's gaining more popularity and canopy piloting obviously being um pretty much the only discipline within skydiving that's spectator friendly so um it's it's fantastic that we've um you know got a leg up and get to participate in this it's um it's going to be great for the sport and um great for us just to be you know sort of part of um something a bit bigger and you know meet all the other athletes as you said and um yeah i'm really excited the Air Sports Promotion YouTube channel is a place that you can visit right after the show. Amongst over 200 other Air Sports interviews, you will also find the full-length interview there with Lee. It's really worth a watch and a like and a share and the support. So I don't often talk in the show about my own personal skydiving career, but if you don't follow me on social media, you may have missed that here in Canada, we are right now in the season. And this last weekend, I was load organizing at Skydive Burnaby over the lake shore of Lake Erie. Perfect weather, stunning views, and a great fun group of jumpers. Owners Mike and Tara really do have a beautiful, friendly drop zone. It reminded me of why I fell in love with the sport over 32 years ago.
and this coming weekend I'll be organising at the Boogie at Chicago Land Skydiving Centre for their July the 4th celebrations. I can't wait. But now let's move on to our Hall of Fame section. On the 23rd of June 1961, Major Robert and Michael White became the first pilot to exceed Mach 5 in an aircraft. This was the 38th flight of the X-15 program. Flights during this phase incrementally increased the speed and altitude of the X-15 up to its desired limits of Mach 6 and 250,000 feet. On the 24th of June 1939, Pan American Airways began their scheduled air service from the United States to Britain. The Boeing 314 Yankee Clipper made its first flight from Port Washington, New York. It made intermediate stops at Shediac, New Brunswick and Botswood, Newfoundland, where fog delayed the flying boat until the 28th of June. On the 25th of June 1946, experimental test pilot Max R. Stanley made the first flight of the Northrop XB-35 flying wing aircraft, took off from the factory's airfield at Hawthorne, California and flew the prototype bomber to Murak Army Airfield. The initial flight lasted 55 minutes. On the 26th of June 1948, 32 United States Air Force Douglas C-47 Skytrain transports flew 80 tons of supplies to Berlin. The first day of the Berlin airlift as a reply to the Soviet blockade of the Allied portions of the city of Berlin, cutting off all transportation by land and water. This is it, as I said, I'll be in Chicago this coming weekend and direct from there to Birmingham, Alabama to present Canopy Piloting at the World Games. I can't wait. We'll be back here again with another Air Sports News episode next Wednesday. Don't forget to please support us via Patreon if you can. The link is in the description and your help really does give us a chance to continue working to promote air sports and aviation as we have done since 2020. Likes, shares are also always welcome. I'm leaving you with a brand new content video from Dom E Wingsuit channel with outstanding jumps in the Dolomites. So as always guys, take care and keep your eyes on the skies. I'll probably do it again. Wrestle in my expectations. Old hope is a stubborn just a sliver of light and I'm dreaming of the morning oh, Wrestling my expectations oh, Got these expectations